Alright everybody, welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 101. Now off camera, I went and I leveled up the character a little bit. We're now able to use Atorius's greatsword one-handed. Thank god. And today, we're going to conquer the kings. But in order to conquer the kings, we're going to have to first set this up. And... Let's see. Actually, I'm going to try it with the greatsword first. Before I can... Before I get into that. Because now that I can wield this one-handed, use my shield, all that other wonderful crap, should have a much easier time down in New Londo. I'm also going to show you a few other little gimmicks of how to get down into New Londo much faster. Now, while we were away, I changed up my stat line a little bit. There it is for you. I've ascended the Pyromancy Flame to the Ascended Flame plus zero. And... Let's see, what else have I done? That's about it. I went and I farmed some humanity so I could keep uh, getting back alive for these run-throughs. Because again, I said I'm going to play the whole game being as alive as much as possible to not run away from invasions. They're not that bad. There's no reason to hide from them. Now you'll see the ghosts up here. What we're going to do is we're just going to ignore them. They're decently slow moving. Run over to this little ledge here. If you look down, there's a floor. And we're into New Londo, skipping all that extra crap. Now, I've known so little about the Dark Wraiths, because I never really come down here, other than to kill the four kings. And what we can do is we could just skip by these guys. Oh, shit. Okay, moving too quick. So now we have to go through the horrible, horrible... ...entire level. Luckily, that grab missed. Oh, so they can be stunned. Good. Oh, sweet dodge, bro. Dodge this. That's the uh, one-handed power attack. Now we'll not make the same mistakes twice. We're ready to traverse the abyss. Now I have three humanity in the bar. It's going to be a little bit of a pain if I lose that. Do I have any transient curses left? I have three transient curses left. Alright. In case I summon Beatrice, I want to be able to shoot down the ghost up top. So she'll actually come participate in the fight. Alright, where is he? There he is.
And as you can see, that Nova has a really long range on it. And you go. Where's your buddy? There he is. Shit. And you can see how it drained the humanity out of my counter when he grabbed me as well. far away. However, he has some kind of magnetic pull. And it just draws me into his grasp. Because he's a douche. Here comes the Nova. This time I was far enough away. Yeah, these guys have some kind of element on their swords to be piercing through my shield like that. Luckily, most of their attacks are very vertical, so just uh, dodging to the side is usually good enough to get past it. Which is handy because I'm out of healing items. Nope. Damn it. Oh, crap. I hate it when they do that one. But even hitting my shield, it's not reducing the uh, incoming damage at all from them. So I'm going to switch that out to the Crest Shield. Take that off. Don't need you. And I heal humanity on my bar. Can't use that. That will. Let them learn. Now the Crush Shield has 80% magic resist on it. So if I'm still going to take damage through the shield, might as well reduce that as much as I can. It also has 100% physical resist on it. it. Sucks versus fire though. Oh yeah, the other thing I did, <laughs> the uh, headpiece I'm wearing there, the thing that looks like two little wings, is the Crown of Dusk, which boosts my magic damage. I went down and got the Antiquated Armor, which had finally spawned for me. Apparently you first have to summon Dusk from her summon sign before that uh, armor set will load in. So we're off to go see the kings again. And I was doing pretty good there. Obviously it could have gone better. I could have won. So we'll just uh, skip by these ghosts here. Admittedly, if I had maybe the two flasks that I wasted taking on the Dark Wraiths or getting stabbed in the back, may have been the difference in that battle. But now that I know I have my humanity on my bar too, which acts as a full heal. Uh, 
Ah, uh, motherfucker. You know what? Fuck it, I'm not gonna res. I'm just gonna run for it. I'm sick of this place eating up my humanity crystals. I don't need Beatrice. It's the only reason I was uh, resurrecting was to have Beatrice come help me, but fuck it. I can do this without her. Just need to check on one thing before I go fight the kings again. Or just die to dark wraiths down there for no reason. Now if you summon Beatrice to help you fight the kings, and you win while she's summoned, her armor set will spawn on this little cliff here. The uh, witch set. It's actually a decent looking light uh, armor set. No poise, so it's good for casters. Yeah, fuck it, I don't need it. Never planned on wearing anything but the pyromancer robes. But that's where it would spawn. If you have Beatrice come help you in this fight, doesn't matter if she's alive at the end or not, her armor set will spawn on that little cliff over there, in that patch of grass. Gotta remember not to use the power attacks on this weapon, because they are super slow. Backstab! Rotten hell, you son of a bitch. Dodge the ghost, sticking its little bony paws through the window. Round and around the staircase we go once more. Might as well get full health before we start this fight. Hopefully this time I can keep the king count low, because there's about three of them at the end there. And do not be afraid to keep wailing on the kings after one has died, because it has a shared HP bar with the rest of the kings. So if you keep wailing on him while he's dying, it still detracts from the shard HP bar. There you are. It's gonna hurt. Oh, you're kidding me! Okay, this fight not going exactly to plan right now. See it still detracting from the uh, king bar there while I was wailing on the corpse. 
However, I then got double slashed in the back. And I'm getting too hit by these guys currently. But you can see that you can still wail on a corpse, and it still matters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Notorious' greatsword off here and switch over to a non-demon, non-enchanted weapon. There we go. And we're going to try something a little different. And what I'm going to do is we're going to wear a catalyst in our left hand and use an enchanted halberd but enchanting it a different way. Hope this doesn't come back to bite me in the ass. Now the way enchanting a weapon works is we're going to cover that here and now. Get a few of the pros and cons out of the way. So I'm going to fight a couple of these Dark Wraiths this time. i got to really remember to send this elevator up once I get off it. So I'm not always sitting here waiting for it. Need humanity. So do we all. Go farm rats. Now what I have wielded here is the Crystal Halberd, not my enchanted one. You picked this up on a Mimic in Anne Orlando. It does decent enough damage. Even though it's slowly revung ah it's solely relying on my physical stats being my strength and dexterity. And it has fairly low scale on either. It's a DC scaling weapon. But the crystal on it kills the durability, sure, but it makes its normal attacks much stronger. Hopefully making up for my handicap and my physical stats right now. So, oh, here's a Dirk. Mm, here's a Dick Wraith. Good amount of damage. Now we'll summon a couple of them out here. See if they want to come out and play. Oh, yep, they're there. And our good friend the Ghost, who managed to fuck me up bad. Just long enough to fuck me over. Ah, I love this shit. And ghosts. Ghosts are my favorite part of this game. Them and bone wheels. Anything that can attack you when you're not looking. Backstabbing sacks of fuck. So, back we down. Back we go down. Here we go. Look to do. But we did 559 damage to that Dark Wraith when I backstabbed him. This time I'm going to enchant my weapon and backstab him to see if there's a difference. And the enchantment lasts about a bad amount of time. Maybe five minutes. Maybe two minutes. I don't know, I've never actually timed it before. So, for everybody watching, go ahead and time how long the buff lasts, assuming I'll live to see the end of the buff. So, timer starts now. Alright, where is he? Right under somewhere. Oh, there you are. Come on, Odor.
you can see that it does, you know, substantially more damage. Even on its normal attack, it will do substantially more damage than if I just poke them normally. So, now that we've uh, investigated Enchanted Weapon, or in this case, Great Magic Weapon, we're going to head back down into the Abyss once more to challenge the Kings. And that's where it ran out. So yeah, definitely not five minutes. More like 30 seconds on that one. I'm probably going to want my Pyromancy back. But, let's see what we can do. Figures, the second I pull out the magic resist shield, they stop casting magic, they just go pure physical at me. Much less damage. These guys have a lot of magic resist, so the great magic weapon isn't going to help me very much here. I have to back away. Switch over to uh, Pyromancy. Shit. That charging grab attack gets me pretty well every time. Skull of Flask. It's gonna hurt. <laughs> oh, not a double. Oh, there's the big swing. Heal. Over the sword. Over the sword. Cast. Third king coming in. Block. Dodge. Cast. Down. Next one. Dodge. Dodge. Cast. Dodge. Switch. Hup. Hup. Incoming Nova. Take it on the shield. Oh, got hit from uh, Blindside King. I have to drink before I take that. Oh! Double stab from Kings. Dodge. Dodge. Attack. Or get hit in the legs. Heal. There he goes. Next game. Shit. Oh! Nicely timed. Dodge. Heal. Gonna hurt. Heal. Big slash. Charge in. Shit. 
Tried to dead angle me with this purple crap. Yup. Big slash. Down you go. But you see what I had to do there? Unlock the target and turn towards the uh, purple attack that was coming in. So I didn't get damn angled. Oh. Oh, that feels good. Oh, for humanity. That is nearly not enough <laughs> for the amount that I spent. And this here is Darkstalker Kath. But we'll talk to him in a second. I want this bonfire. I want it so bad. From here, we're going to level up. And let's see. Regardless of what I level, the uh, Great Sword of Victorious will scale. So I'm going to get a little bit more faith. I'm going to want 25 excuse me, faith, to be able to join the Warriors of Sunlight. You need either 25 faith, or every time you're summoned to help someone kill a boss and you succeed, it requires 5 less faith to join the Warriors of Sunlight. But we're going to walk over here and talk to Kath. Greetings, undead warrior. I am the primordial serpent, Darkstalker Kath. I can guide thee and illuminate the truth. The truth I shall share without sentiment. After the advent of fire, the ancient lords found the three souls, but your progenitor found a fourth unique soul, the Dark Souls. Your ancestor claimed the Dark Souls and waited for fire to subside. And soon, the flames did fade, and only dark remained. Thus began the Age of Men, the Age of Dark. However, Lord Gwyn trembled at the dark, clinging to his Age of Fire, and in dire fear of humans, and the Dark Lord, who would one day be born amongst them. Lord Gwyn resisted the course of nature by sacrificing himself to link the fire and commanding his children to shepherd the humans. Gwyn has blurred your past to prevent the birth of the Dark Lord. I am the Primordial Serpent. I seek to right the wrongs of the past, to discover our true lord. But the other servant, Framped, lost his sense and befriended Lord Gwyn. Undead warrior, we stand at a crossroads. Only I know the truth about your fate. You must destroy the fading Lord Gwyn, who has coddled fire and resisted nature, and become the fourth lord, so that you may usher in an age of dark. Very well. I shall now guide you to Gwyn's prison. Be still, and trust thine flesh to me. Now, if you'd given the lord vessel to Frampt, Kath won't be here to turn you into a Dark Lord. If you give the uh, vessel to Kath, like I'm about to, Frampt will disappear from the world and you'll no longer be able to sell items. This is Gwyn's prison. So each playthrough now, has pros and cons to who you give the Lord vessel, vessel to.
there's entry zones to every Lord zone that had this uh, orange fog around it that you couldn't enter until you get the Lord vessel in place. The only Lords you're allowed to fight before that are the Four Kings. Which is, you know, how you unlock the Dark Wraith Covenant and all that. So I'm gonna offer it the uh, Four Kings Bikin, bequeathed Lord Soul. Take that off. And my headset's running out of power again. One moment, please. I really need to leave that thing plugged in overnight type of deal. But yeah, the Lord Vessel acts as a normal bonfire. You can rest at it. You can warp from it, everything. And you no longer need the Covenant of Pretorius Ring to traverse the Abyss. So anytime you come back, you don't have to have the Covenant Ring on anymore. And I'm just trying to think of anything I might need. Twenty-one, twenty-nine. <laughs> I'm one humanity short of being able to get everything from uh, the Dark Wraith Covenant here. Very well. Once the vessel is filled with souls, seek Grave Lord Nito, the Witch of Isolith, and the traitor Seath the Scaleless. Fill this vessel with their souls. Then the gate will open so that you may kill Gwyn. Are you ready? Then let us return to the Abyss. Entrust thine flesh to me. I really don't like how he eats you to move you around places. But you can see I can run around the abyss now, just fine without the Covenant of Victorious on. Ah, if you wish, I shall grant the art of life drain, the legendary power of the Dark Lord. It can preserve your humanity while undead, and cast off the shackles placed upon your brethren. He wants you to enter the Covenant, the Dark Wraith Covenant. And before joining, he gives you the Dark Hand, which apparently Dark Wraiths drop. I did not know that. And you can offer him humanity. Uh, the first ten humanity you give him, he will give you the Red Eye Orb, which is an infinite supply of Cracked Eye Orbs for uh, invading other players. The trick is, however, you need to be in the Dark Wraith Covenant in order for it to work. At 20 humanity offered, he gives you nothing. At 30, he gives you the Dark Lord Armor Set, which is basically what the Dark Wraiths around New Lundo wear. It's a decent medium armor set, and the move set you can witness from just fighting the Dark Wraiths. If you warp from uh, the Serpents, it just means they eat you and take you to the Lord Vessel. And the Covenant item for these guys is one you buy, it's just the Cracked Eye Orbs, in case you leave the Covenant and you'd still like doing Invasion PP PvP. Holy crap, I can't talk tonight. Undead warrior, to speak now is premature. It begins with your retrieval of the Lord Vessel. I already have the Lord Vessel. They failed me, every last one of them. They were strong, but saw not the truth. I am certain that you will prove different. Farewell. All right. So there's three more lords left for me to fight, and the DLC content. So, 
what I'm going to do, now that I've conquered the kings, is I'm going to warp out and we're going to go down to the Daughter of Chaos. And from here, we're going to invade Isolith. The birthplace of the, you know, Flame of Chaos. And I'll put old Trusty Rusty back on here. The downside is, since Isolith is the birthplace of Pyromancy, a lot of things are fire resistant in here. So my Pyromancer Flame isn't going to be able to save the day for me here. I'll just light this fire so I don't have to walk that 30 steps. But since the Daughter of Chaos is hidden behind an invisible wall, they give other players this bonfire here to spawn at. Just in case you didn't know. Or didn't find her. Wasn't until about my second run through of the game that I found that invisible wall. Now, you do not have to kill Ceaseless Discharge to get into Isolith. It's just a very big pain in the ass. You have to try and skirk the edge of the lava there, dive rolling over everything to get into the ruins. But this next boss, Ceaseless Discharge, isn't going to be too bad, I don't think. All the creatures you see down here are because the Witch of Isleth attempted to recreate the first flame with her Lord Soul and everything got corrupted, including her daughters, and her one son, who became Ceaseless Discharge due to the corrupting nature of the Flame of Chaos. Quayla and Quaylag became those weird spider creatures, and the Bed of Chaos is the Witch of Isolith. What became of her? There's two orbs alongside her that kind of tether her to the world, are two more of her daughters, and the last one was just outright killed when the flames erupted. And of course everybody knows uh, Quelana out there, the advanced pyromancy trainer, is the last of the daughters. But you can see how Ceaseless Discharge is actually not a bad dude. He doesn't even carry her here. Until, of course, you disturb his sister's grave. Now this is just a kind of cheap way to beat Ceaseless Discharge, is <laughs> Luke and the Rancor type of style. He can't fit down here. So what it'll do is, he'll fling his giant arm in, or he's going to do something else. There he is. Come on, buddy. Yeah, he's flinging his arm down a little bit too far. Oh, 
Huh. They may have patched this. Yeah, usually he leaves that arm there for you to attack. So, obviously that side has been patched. But now that I've stolen all of his uh, sister's wonderful loots, I don't have to run all the way back there to aggro him. He's just always going to be hostile. By the way, don't get hit by a ceaseless discharge, it sucks. Now, don't try and get everything on your first playthrough of the game, because you can't. The Soul of Sif builds into three or four different objects. He's just going to be a gigantic douchebag. He guard the staircase on me. I want. Oh, that's not going to be good. on the dodge. But yeah, down on the right, you can see the ruins of Isolith there. And demons wouldn't actually exist in the world if it wasn't for the first flame. So, you know, the Taurus demon and the Capra demon and all those other demons. Yep, all the Witch of Isolith's fault. Here we go again. gonna sit back there and lava cannon me.
anybody's wondering how much that fall does, it's a about, you know, over 100 damage. 140 damage. For sliding down that little cliff. Gravity, thou art a heartless bitch. Oh yeah, there's a douchebag. Oh, you're gonna walk down here this time? Yeah, thanks. Come on down, princess. Nope. There's gonna be that guy. Definitely gonna have to kindle that fire. Also apparently got wall hacks. It like a champ. See, this is how my first run was supposed to go. No, somebody had to be uncooperative. Good. Die. Only cost me five humanity crystals. You gave me one. But at least I still have the soft humanity. Now with intelligence 25, my sorcery is still not going to hit very hard compared to what my pyromancy was. But better than nothing against creatures that are going to be mostly fire resistant.
20,000 souls. Now, time to climb back up to that bonfire and get alive. Now, unlike the rest of the little uh, egg carriers that are up top, these guys are kind of hostile. I mean, they're not exactly threatening. But you can mostly still just ignore the hostile ones. the temptation of continuing to use that. Actually, I'm going to kindle this barn fire too. Seriously, I haven't upgraded any of these bows? I've been slacking. Now, let's talk about crossbows. You'll notice that I use the uh, normal bows a lot, but damage-wise, they are inferior to a crossbow. Surprisingly, unless you get a lot of dexterity to help scale them up. A plus one crossbow gains so much attack on its uh, upgrades because it doesn't have a scaling stat. So every upgrade you put into a crossbow makes a big difference into its damage. Whereas normal bows, you only gain slight increase in damage, but it has great scaling stats. And down here in Izalith, we have a herd of Taurus demons. These guys, thankfully, do not respond. However, they have about the same health, actually, as the one you face for your first boss in the game. Man, how the hell did Notorious wield this thing? And thankfully, with the bow, you can kind of cheap them out one at a time, or you can get uh, a little brave. Just to test out how well these are going to work. And Homing Soul Mass is a great spell. See, me and you, we're gonna have some problems. Now, you do not want to step on that lava. That is an instant kill. Ooh, Demon's Great Axe. Uh. Demon weapons, such as the Demon Great Axe, the Demon uh, Great Hammer, the Demon Machete, they are all great weapons, but incredibly strength intensive, because they're huge. But you can see there, the Demon Great Axe has an A scaling on strength. So if you're playing a very strong character, it is a great weapon to have, not to mention upgrading that into crystal will make that weapon nearly unstoppable. Now I have five more intelligence than I needed to cast Homing Soul Mass, and it does about half their health. So every character path is viable in this game for damage output and usability. It all comes down to how the player uses the skills that they've taken. Oh, most of those missed. Damn it. Do not kick me into that. Now, these Taurus demons do not respawn. So I'm just clearing these guys out of the way for now. 
Also, if you have any gold pine resin handy, it still works just as well on these guys as it does on the first boss. Damn AOE explosions. Oh, looks like we have another taker. Now, unfortunately, Soul Mask can't exactly dictate when an enemy is going to die so it might hit an already falling opponent. Again, do not step in the lava. It will kill you almost instantly. So see all those treasures on the other side of the lava? Forget about them for now. They're dead to you. Now, if you're thinking about using the lava to kill the Taurus demons, they're immune to it. There we go. Now that the path is clear... I really want those treasures. It pains me almost to my soul to have to leave treasure behind. Even again, with Ceaseless Discharge up there, you can make it across the lava. You just have to be able to dive roll and have a lot of vitality. And there's our other old friend, the Capra Demon. Thankfully, Capras are more of a dex creature than a strength int, or a strength vitality creature. So you can take them down fairly quickly. And it's so much easier when you don't fight them in a phone booth. And here's an NPC scripted event. Knight Kirk, he's back. And better than before. I need to try. Well, stop trying to hit people with that. Oh, shitty. But yeah, Kirk gets stronger every time you fight him. Come on, quit fumbling. I'm gonna fight Kirk again. But to do that, you have to be alive. All the NPC scripted events are coded exactly as if they were human players. So all the conditions have to be met. You have to be alive. In order to face any red phantoms that you want to fight. You have to be alive to summon NPC help. So going through the game in undead mode, you're basically playing by yourself the whole time. Not even NPCs. And you miss a lot of little things if all you do is stay dead the whole time. Like, I've watched a couple of commentators on this game, and for some reason they'll just suicide the second they get invaded. 
I don't understand that. Why not at least fight for your chance to survive, get souls and humanity from him? Although, thankfully, the demons up top were worth a lot more souls. Where'd you leave my blood stain, Kurt? There you are. Vents yep. triggered. This time I'm ready for you. Now you fight Kirk a total of three times, and after you've killed him the third time, I forget exactly where that one takes place, but his armor set becomes available in the chamber of the uh, Chaos Princess. At a back wall. So it could be that he's been working with uh, Quela the whole time. Nice, a demon machete too? Perfect. Uh, I just need to check how much humanity I have. 16, 20, 28. Two humanity shy. But I only need rank two with the covenant. And if you're planning on saving Solaire, you have to do this. Or there's probably another way to do it, but this way is the way I know to do it. And it's going to cost me all my humanity crystals, or at least most of them. I'll save my twin humanities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sacrifice all this humanity to the spider, Quayla. And people call her Quayla, she never actually gets a name other than our fair lady. But all their names seem to start with a Quayla. Like Quaylana, Quaylag. So she gets to be Quayla. Also, I seem to have stockpiled another number of souls. So, hooray for upgrades! Now, if I had Priscilla's dagger, it's definitely what I would be using on the next boss. However, Priscilla decided to die well before I could do anything. Now, unfortunately, and I wish this was true, but you can't give them the humanity crystals. You actually have to crack them and put them in your counter. Now, 
Now, all Covenants have up to the third rank, or 30 of the Covenant item turn-ins. So whatever their Covenant item happens to be, whether it's Humanity, or Souvenirs of Reprisal, anything like that, up to the third rank gives you things. The first rank will give you something, second rank generally gives you nothing, but third rank will give you something cool. And past that point, you can continue to gain ranks with the uh, Covenant by turning in more and more items, and it usually makes the cool item they give you better. The exception is, you know, the Chaos Covenant here. Once they give you the third rank item, there's no reason to ever... There's no reason to ever give her more humanity past that. Because, unfortunately, the Chaos Pyromancy doesn't get any better, except if you have humanity in your counter. But the second rank for these, the Chaos Covenant here unlocks a special door. You need to be rank 2 to unlock the door into Isolith, so you can skip a lot of the extra stuff getting there. But one of the things along the way to that is the Sunlight Maggot. And it is a head item that you can get that casts light on you. So you can see in the Tomb of the Giants without having to give up your shield slot for a lantern. Or having to rescue Dusk and learn the spell Cast Light. Which in my opinion is the best of the three because it only occupies an attunement slot instead of an equipment slot. And yeah, this is going to take a little while. Now, you'll notice that this Firekeeper also doesn't say anything. That is because you don't understand her language. If you get the item, uh, an old witch's ring, and equip it, you can actually have conversations with uh, this character, the Fair Lady. humanity should have given me a uh, Chaos Covenant plus two. Hopefully that's just some kind of weird glitch. You also usually get uh, a little message with Covenant rank increase, unless I miss that. So, I may have just wasted a bunch of humanity into that spider for nothing, but we'll find out soon. And I'll probably just stick with the Chaos Covenant for now, until I give her the 30 humanity, or possibly 40 humanity now, to get the uh, Chaos Tempest spell. Alright, back down into the ruins we go. And the ruins are actually a fairly small place, if you have the uh, Chaos Covenant at plus two. To unlock the door. I mean, it pretty well spits you out at the Lord.
other than that, it's a roundabout type of uh, get there. But there's some pretty interesting things along the way. And mainly I want to save Solaire. Because he will give you a third ending. There's no trophy for it. But, uh, spoiler alert, spoilers, 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 more spoilers. Skip ahead if you don't want more spoilers. But Solaire, if you save him here in Isolith from killing himself, which is him going hollow, because he finds his beloved own son, which is the Sunlight Maggot. If you save him from going hollow from that, you can summon him to help you in the Gwyn fight. And if you win the Gwyn fight with Solaire, you get a third ending where Solaire sacrifices himself to Link the Fire instead of you. Okay, and spoilers. Ow, I forgot that attack sucked. Yeah, I have souls. Oops. Okay. Lesson one, remember to spend souls. Well, sorry, that's lesson two. Lesson one was always have the correct catalyst equipped if you're going to be doing any kind of casting. the wise do not get close to these critters it's gonna take a little bit but it's much safer than actually engaging it in melee actually can I lock onto it good make this a little quicker And you kill that sucker because he drops you a bonfire. Not sure exactly how that works, if he ate a bonfire. But, nevertheless, bonfire! And level ups. Get a few more points into faith here. The next fight's going to be difficult with my current weapon readout. Not these little guys, by the way, that's not what I'm referring to. Come on, Biggie. Oop. Do not kick me off the ledge. Or stab me with your axe. That wasn't very nice of them at all. But luckily the bonfire is just up here. And since I fed all my good humanity crystals to the spider, I don't have any to resurrect myself at this time. Stop kicking! 
Alright, I'll just hang out down here and die. For some reason, my character felt the extreme need to kick. Not just a normal need to kick, but an extreme need. Also, what you get from uh, disturbing Ceaseless Discharge's sister's grave is an armor set that has the best fire resist and poison resist in the game, I believe. It's the... Uh, We'll look at it later. Fix your little red wagon. Now, these two Taurus demons do respawn. Hack his balls off. And he goes. And we'll continue along this way. Fight yet another Taurus demon. Then we'll take this guy down quickly. Be careful in his death animations that you don't get swept off the ledge. Yeah, you could kill these guys. They occasionally drop green shards. There they are. No? You don't feel like drinking? How about now? Green charts. They also have a very low chance to drop uh, red chunks. And red chunks are required for any flame advancement past plus five, whether it be chaos or just standard flame. Now, as you can see, this one's chain is hard to hit. So, give it a couple of taps, make sure it's not a mimic. And the large flame ember. You need that from, you know, 6 to 10 on the standard flame path. And fire weapons, while they destroy the uh, scaling stats on weapons, they mirror its physical output. So if you put it on a greatsword, the amount of fire damage it can do is also much higher. So the higher the damage output base on a weapon, not with its scaling stat, the better it is for lightning or fire reinforcement. Hey, treasure. Love treasure.
All right, up ahead, that is a boss fog wall. So what we're going to do is, we're going to ignore it for now. Oh, missed the jump. <laughs> Oops. I don't think it's anything amazing in that treasure pile anyway. But down here is the door to Isolith. That was sealed by Quaylag and her sister. And these little suckers right here are the sunlight bugs. However, the sunlight maggot is a very special one. He's got glowing red eyes, all the other stuff like that. Oh no, you don't get back here, you little sucker. And sometimes he spawns out here. You don't have to worry about it too much. But most of the time he spawns on the other side of this door. I need uh, a little bit more humanity to get in. You can hear them kind of chittering on the other side of that door. So what I can do is I can try and run around this area for a little while and collect enough uh, corpses to give myself some passive humanity, I think. And if I get two of that, I can feed ten more humanity into the spider by cracking my twin humanities. I'm not exactly keen on doing. Because those are super helpful for reversing hollowing and kindling bonfires. There's nothing else past this corpse. Or what I can do is try and kill off enough things for one passive humanity. And collect the humanity crystal off this boss. Just making sure I don't have any extra little black sprites. No, nope, damn it. Now, this boss is going to be difficult. Okay. You want to have high flame resistance going into this fight. So putting on your flame stone plate ring really does help. Because they really love this character model. If you just charge directly into his belly, his standard move set is to do that. And I'll just give him some space to explode. Dead angle fireball. Up he goes. I am someplace I did not want to be, is in that corner. And he drops you a little cookie, a demon catalyst. And it's a sorcery catalyst you can use as a weapon. You can see there that it's got scaling stats. This magic adjustment isn't anywhere near as good as any other catalyst. But it's one you can really attack with. It's got physical and fire damage associated with it. It's a little heavy for a catalyst at 4 weight. 
but as far as catalyst goes, it's a good battle catalyst. So we're up to a nine humanity. Let's move on. Now I might have to start giving Artorius' greatsword more physical properties by upping my dexterity and my strength. Because these things seem to be resistant to magic. The only reason for coming up here is this. You can unlock this shortcut from Quelag's domain. And I'm going to take this opportunity to rest at this bonfire, get my flasks, my spells, and I might be able to run, level up a little bit more. can level up. So I'll get my final point phase so I can join the Warriors of Sunlight Covenant. And with that uh, shortcut open, I can come back anytime I choose. But we'll push on into Isolith. Yeah, we want to go this way. You can see the Taurus Demon, and that's a quick way back into the uh, Fire Sage's room. Or, you know, just a quick way back down. Because we also have the option of going down here. So, up! Unlocks the shortcut. Meanwhile, down brings us to another bonfire. I already have my ten flasks, I don't need to kindle that fire. And unfortunately this is where Solaire will go crazy. If you do not have the Sunlight Maggot Forum before proceeding through this boss fog here, Solaire unfortunately will find the Sunlight Maggot and go crazy. Your first goal in this boss fight is the GTFO. He's thankfully slow on his feet. Unfortunately, he kicked me into the lava. Get out of the lava! <sighs> Couple of green shards there, you know, just for good measure. But while you're here, this gives you a nice platform to fight on you got a little bit of room to maneuver.
Now he's able to escape that uh, crab attack by spamming the bumper buttons. Oh shit. There you go. There he is. That jump attack is his go-to move when he can't see you anymore. And his tail thrash, thankfully, isn't that threatening. The charred orange ring is a very necessary item. With it, we can traverse the lava for at least significantly reduced damage. So we could just kind of walk out here and it hurts you a little bit faster than poison does but you can still deal with it. And an interesting aspect of the charred orange ring is your character's kick attack while you're wearing it will cause fire damage to anything you kick. Oh, treasure. What are you doing there? Why haven't Johnny collected you? Missed. And I'm back up to 60 some thousand souls. So I'm either going to start working on dexterity, strength, intelligence uh, there's just so many things that you can level but with the grabbing of that last crystal I can now crack more humanity and hopefully get to uh, the sunlight maggot before Solaire does and let's go with vitality I could use a little bit more HP Actually, I can warp from here. Unfortunately, this will leave me without any humanity crystals. So it's down to either I'll go off camera and farm humanity from the rats in the sewer or I'm down to just gaining soft humanity from the creatures around in a level. Now I've never made it this past this point in Solaire's story. I've just read about it online. I have still read nothing about the DLC and what happens and how to do the fights or anything like that. So that's still going to be all new when I go into it. Now, of course, more intelligence means that my spells are definitely going to start hitting harder. Or faith, your miracles start hitting harder the more points you put into it. So, it's kind of at a crossroads to see where I should go with this character again. I can go more endurance and more vitality for better survivability. can go for more damage on any of the stats with this greatsword. 
I could go for more attunement slots. Nope, oh, there's the Pyromancy Chaos Storm. So that is the final rank for the Chaos Covenant. So now, hey, a free, uh, actually, do I have all my spells? I do have all my spells. I'm going to rest up here, though, to get my uh, two extra flasks back. Now you can see that souls are coming a lot more frequently and easily at the uh, later stages of the game. So it's much easier to upgrade your gear if you haven't done so already by just buying shards. So if something's not working for you or you wish you had uh, something else upgraded, perfect opportunity to do that. Uh, Fire Sage's room is the other way. There's a giant hole in the floor. Accidentally put that elevator back up. There we go. <laughs> Okay. So you don't have to hurt yourself to get down to the floor here, but falling usually won't kill a character unless you have like five vitality, maybe nine. So if you're base level thief, don't fall. Aha, these little suckers are back. Ragger. But you can see now that I've gained that final rank with the Chaos Covenant, I can open this door. And inside is a Sunlight Maggot. He's one of these little bugs around here somewhere. It's hard to tell because they all kind of look alike. Except, you know, he's the one that actually dropped something. And what you can do is, you can wear the Sunlight Maggot like a hat. And he casts light, so you can see where you're going even in the dark a little bit better. And I can keep continuing into Isolith past this point, and it spits you out pretty well at the final boss. But we'll keep moving along the normal route. Actually, I'm going to want uh, Dusk Crown on to help boost my sorceries. Now that I have the Sunlight Maggot, I can talk to Solaire because undead go hollow when they have nothing left to live for. Once Solaire finds his son, he has nothing left to live for. So he goes hollow. Now that I've removed that son, he should continue his quest looking for his own son. And that's S-U-N, not, you know, S-O-N. I don't think he has any children. It's speculated that he is Gwyn's firstborn son himself, who is removed of his deity status. For, you know, fucking something up. So, after Isolith, I'm going to... Well, it's only about half done Isolith anyway. We can speculate on what I do after Isolith once I get done Isolith. That's strange. Usually Solaire is sitting in this corner. Maybe I'm too late and he's already gone. Which 
is a real shame. But we'll continue on. Yeah, I think I'm gonna screw over all the plot lines. Oh well. Uh, if you have freed Sigmire's daughter before coming down here, this is his final place before he gives up his knighthood. Be very, very quiet. Those big things hurt a lot. So, we'll just do this the sneaky way. Uh, luckily, if you do kill them, they do not respawn. So you can clear out the entire lava floor of them. they're all incredibly stupid. Mimic check. Nope. Soul of a great hero. Is even better than soul of a hero. I believe that is 20,000 souls. Don't see me. Don't see me. Good giant. Ah, crap. Time to run. <laughs> Tail sweep is really long reaching. Clips through buildings and kicks a lot of ass. But luckily, you can start the lava run back here. And the door into Isolith skips all of this. Once you have the door open, you no longer need to maintain your uh, covenant status with. The Witches of Isolith, or the uh, Daughter of Chaos. Because, well, you opened the door already. So I'm free to go join another covenant, it's just inconvenient at this time to leave. Statues are a lie. We've already picked up the soul of the great hero. And this time we're just gonna run right away. Now, this is a secret bonfire in here. Thank God for its existence. It's the ramp you need to get up. Oh, 
Also with the charred orange ring, you can go back up to the top of Isolith, where those uh, treasures were that I told you that they were dead to you. They are no longer dead to you, you can have them now. So yeah, I'm gonna need a little bit more damage to just one-shot these guys. And you could just skip past all this by sprinting. Or if you really want to, you can spend your time hacking down all those things in that little corridor. But there's really no need. Now that sucker up there breathes acid, which will destroy your equipment. I call him the Pudding Man. Really, he looks like a giant walking pudding cup. But he also drops red titanite chunks. And I believe he also has a chance of dropping red titanite slabs, but it's excessively rare. Up here is the final Daughter of Chaos. The final final Daughter of Chaos. I know, right? I think there was seven of them. But she guards her mother and is just a simple hollow. Non-respawning. But Isolith Catalyst Pyromancy wasn't always as it was. Before, it used to just be fire sorceries. And uh, once Isolas was lost, so was the art of fire sorcery. But nevertheless, the Daughters of Chaos found a new way to cast fire magic, and thus Pyromancy was born. Chaos Fire Whip. Basically you do a figure out in front of you with a short range spell. It has a chance to stun. This here is the boss fog. And uh, the Witch Vizalith is the only boss fight where stats don't matter at all. And you could go down into Isolith on this ramp here. There's a few extra treasures and stuff like that. Down in a poisonous marsh. Get over that route. Piss off. Any more of your little fun bags want to come around? Okay, now that I have you all. Nope, it's done to death. Love it. But luckily the bonfire is just outside, so it's an easy run back. Always remember to take the orange charred ring on f after you've done your lava run. Because you don't need it anymore. Uh. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put on the uh, fire resist ring, give myself that extra little boost in defense. Why can't you guys be like the guys back at the start of the level that I could just one shot? That'd be nice. If it actually connects, it does great things to enemies. Trick is getting the damn thing to connect. No, nope, phased out before it hit him. There we go. Fortunately, for some reason, that one tree branch up there prevents me from locking on to the uh, Jello Pudding Cup monster here. None of that. Come for my souls. If anybody plays Warhammer 40k, don't these things kind of look like nerdlings? Nope, oh, kick it. It's not going to help any. And this is the exit from the doorway of Isolith that I showed you earlier, where the Sunlight Maggot is. Basically, you kill that Titanite Demon, you get to chop your way through all these guys, and that brings you out to the boss area. Now the Knight of Katarina, Sigmar, if you've rescued his daughter and talked to her, if you've rescued him from Sen's Fortress, if you've rescued him from the uh, chapel in Anor Orlando, if you've rescued him from, let's see, uh, Quelag's domain, Blight Town there, because he gets poisoned down there and asks you for moss. If you give it to him, he gives you a shield. If you've done all that, you meet him at the top of this pit. And he is ultimately embarrassed on his knighthood that he has needed your help that much. And he kind of jumps headfirst into all of these things down there. Which, if you fall into their top part there, kills you instantly. So, if you manage to jump down and save him one last time, he gives you something. If he dies during the assault, you get nothing. So it's in your best interest to kill these things off as quickly as possible for the Onion Knight. getting better at manual aiming. Go me. But yeah, they will make short work of him. So make sure that you're uh, either up here picking them off, or you jump down with him to help divvy out where all the damage is going. Don't need you right now. I need 
you. Heresy rolls from idleness, right? There's the red Titanite slab, the one free one you get in the game. There's one slab of every type for free in the game type of deal, but there's ways to get more. For instance, if you trade a Ascended Pyromancy Flame plus zero to Snuggly the Crow, she will give you a red Titanite slab. However, that's a lot of souls pumped into a Pyromancy Glove for just that. So be sure you really want that uh, flame weapon before you trade her an Ascended Pyromancy Flame. If you trade her an Unascended Pyromancy Flame, she gives you a Red Titanite Chunk. Where the hell was the way out again? This way, probably. Eh, uh, I'm lost. Crap. <laughs> okay, that's where that thing is. Good to know. Alright, alright. That's where the root system is. We'll come out the other side. Aha! Stairs! Okay, now that we've gotten all the loots out of here, Killed off all that stuff. I believe I've just killed the plotline for the Onion Knight by being here before he was, or rescuing him from Quelag's domain. So unfortunately I'll not be able to complete that plotline for this playthrough. But you're more than welcome to try on yours. Keeping everybody alive and happy is hard. Ah, hell. I have to go back down there. I fucked this up again. Alright. So, remember, it's the back of the chamber on the left hand side. That's where the stairs are. That's where the stairs were. Curses. Lost again. <laughs> okay. There's the slab. We go over here. Got his stuff. A 
up on this thing. Like you guys can see where I want to go, right? you off. Did I get the poison bite ring from... Nope. Okay. Other way. Actually, it might be faster just to die and run back in and continually playing around here. But anyway, you don't need HP to fight the bed of chaos. You don't really need anything to fight the bed of chaos. What you need is a fist. That is it. Now I remember. I think. Or am I still screwed? No, 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 there we go. That's good. Okay. Oh, you're kidding me. There's another staircase that leads up here? Fuck! Then we hop on this, run down this way. Yeah, 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 here we go. Now we got it. Now we got her right. But yeah, there's uh, Isolith. And I'll do one run of the bed here. I have zero healing items anyway. So it's either walk back to the bonfire or fight the bed. It's only 34,000 souls. Rock and roll. Oh ass! Now these orbs on either side of the bed here are actually daughters of chaos that you're chopping into.
Now, unlike most boss fights... The Bed of Chaos destroys her room, but luckily all progress you make towards beating the Bed of Chaos stays saved, so I don't have to try and chop that particular orb again. So we will conquer Isleth in the next episode. Thanks for watching guys. Later.